it's 2021. And these, in my opinion, are the best Belgian beers from 2020 that I reviewed on the channel. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Before I go any further, have a good 2021. I'm drinking the Sussex, the Hepworth Sussex Pale Ale at the moment, which, uh, which has got nothing to do with Belgium at all, but there you go. But I did the German, best of German beer, best of British beer, and it's only right that I do the best of Belgian beer. Now, this was the hardest one I had to do out of all three countries. And what, I did notice some trends in this and it was usually certain breweries came up again and again, just like the German stuff, just like the British stuff. And that's always nice to know because it's, it's one of them things that, that for me, it's, it's good to see these traditional brewers just, in my opinion, being the best of what they do. There was a couple in this that are quite new brewers, but most of these go way back and they don't do much and they haven't jumped on the craft beer bandwagon and they're still brewing the stuff they were brewing years ago and they're just carrying on regardless of trends regardless of what's fashionable and regardless of what is cheap and what isn't cheap if you're ready let's take a look just a quick disclaimer before i start there are several Belgian brewers that are doing other styles of beer. For example, there are a few that are doing pilsners, there are a few that are doing lagers, some are doing pale ales, some are putting their own twists on IPAs, etc. I haven't included them, as I haven't included them in the other videos that I did. This is just going to be about what the country produces and the best brewers from that country. But there is another disclaimer. I have included one brewer who brews Belgian style beer very well, but they don't come from Belgium. They come from the Netherlands, but I'll get onto that later. That's the only caveat I've got in this video. So let's crack on and let's see which are, or which were the best beers of 2020 for me. As you know, there's several styles of beers, but I am going to start with what Belgium is known for most, and that is their Trappist or Abbey beer. Now, they do some fantastic Trappist and Abbey beer, believe me, and I have tried quite a lot of it. And in my opinion, the, the best Trappist beer or best Abbey beer that's brewed in the Abbey beer style came from Chimay. They really did come up trumps with their Grand Reserve. Now, you can argue there's better, but that's the best one I tasted. And there was some stiff competition, believe me. And in all these, I really had to deliberate because there were so many good breweries. With the other German and British brewers, it wasn't too hard of a decision to make, but with the Belgian stuff, it was a hell of a lot harder. But for Chimay to come out on top, that just says to me how good they really were. And that's the Chimay Grand Reserve, well worth checking out. But there are a few others that came very, very close indeed. The Orval Trappist stuff for me was amazing. I really did enjoy that. That got a very high mark indeed. as did the Rochefort 8. Now with Rochefort, there are the 10s and the 6, but for me, the 8 was the best. It really was a very, very good example of Belgian Abbey style beer. Blonde Ale. 
or single if you like. Now this had a hell of a lot of competition and for me I really did have to think about this hard but again Shimei came out on top with their golden ale. That was absolutely superb and the thing about Shimei and it's very common with a lot of other Belgian brewers they only do three or four maybe five different beers but what they do they absolutely have perfected the recipe for them beers and there's no fanfare there's no grand labeling on it no fancy artwork it's very minimalistic but the beer speaks for itself and I like that and yep Shimei again have come out on top but there was some competition Castile Blonde a very nice beer indeed I did enjoy that very drinkable very nice and Le Chouf the little gnome or the little gnomes if you like they do a really good blonde ale and I've tried that before I've drank it in Witherspoon's pubs when you could buy it in Witherspoon's pubs it's always been a favorite of mine really good really really impressed with that Belgian double beer a really nice style one of my favorite styles of Belgian beer characteristically malty dark and sweet and there there were a few contenders for this especially I think out of all the categories I really had to think hard about the best double that I'd tried Shimei again did come out on top now you may think oh I'm being biased or, you know it's nothing to do with that Shimei are at the top of the tree when it comes to Belgian beer they are the equivalent of in German terms I would say Hackershaw, Schneiderweiss, any one of them Bavarian brewers Shimei they just do it right and as I say they haven't got a big range of beers they only do a few five or six but what they do is fantastic it really is and for me their double was the best but as I say there was a lot of competition and it took a lot of deliberating it, it really was a toss-up between the two and the one that came very a very close second was the West Mal double I really enjoyed that and I drink that regularly and I drink it down in a local pub that sells it to me in Kent and it's always every time I go in there I, it is always always on my list of beers to drink in fact I always start the night with a bottle of West Mal it just sets me up it's very very nice indeed highly recommended and another one that I did enjoy was the Bruges Zot their double that was really good and I remember trying the original Bruges Zot the golden ale that they do and it was really nice the blonde it's superb but then I tried the double and in my opinion that was even better so yeah that came a very close second as well I think the West Mal was just it's just a little bit ahead of it but all three of them are just fantastic so when it comes to doubles they're the best triples gradually going, gradually going up the scale of ABV now again the competition was stiff for this and there was quite a few but for me it was a tie and I just couldn't separate the two and again it's going to be Shimo that's testament to just how good they are and yeah I, I can't say any more it's just they are superb the beers they do are superb but they had some very very good competition and for me I couldn't really separate them they're a new brewery and I mentioned them before they've only been going since 2011 I think but it's, that's the Fort Lepin brewery and they're from Bruges and their triple was absolutely amazing really was good they just don't do good beer they do outstanding beer and for a brewery that has only been going since 2011 I really am impressed with them so yeah I think joint top I would be I would be extremely cruel to Fort Lapping if I didn't say theirs was just as good but again there was some very stiff competition 
and obviously triple Carmelite. You know, the Boss Steel's triple Carmelite is, is just an amazing triple that I really do enjoy every now and again. It's become more widely available in the UK. I drink it regularly, absolutely love it. Really nice triple, very good example of a Belgian triple. The Hugue, is that, I don't know how that's pronounced, but the Hugue Delirium Trimmens, very well known beer in Belgium. I tried it earlier last year, absolutely loved it, still love it now, get it on occasion. It's really good, a very, another very good example of a Belgian triple. The first foreign brewery, or the first brewery outside of Belgium that brews Belgium style beer, and that's La Trap. Now their triple was absolutely brilliant. I really did enjoy that. And some might argue I shouldn't be including them in this video because they're from the Netherlands, but I, I can't ignore their beer. It's that good, and they are a genuine Trappist brewery. So I'm gonna include them. If you've got a problem with that, then I don't care. <laughs> Quadruples, not for the faint-hearted, and it's one of my favourite styles, and it's very hit and miss, because some brewers, they can just overload it with too much ethanol, because it's a high ABV beer, anything over 10%, you're looking at the quadruple style of beer, and it's, that, it's getting that balance of ethanol right, because sometimes it can be quite overpowering, but one brewer did stand out for me, and that was the St. Bernardus ABT or Abbott 12. Absolutely superb stuff. I really did enjoy that. But there was one beer. Now this is a bit of a deliberation for me because it was billed as Belgian strong ale, but in my opinion, it, was, it had more in common with the quadruple. And that was the Bravent Apostle And I'm gonna call it a quadruple because the style is so similar. But that came very close. I really did enjoy that. In fact, I remember, I will never forget that review because I really wasn't expecting much because the label looked quite cheap. But it absolutely bowled me over. And yeah, I can heartily recommend the Bravent Apostle. Wit beer, Belgian Wit beer. Their take on a wheat beer. Now, as I say, in all the videos, it's completely different to German wheat beer but I still like it. And there are a few that really stood out for me this year, but one in particular, and I tried it quite recently. I'm not sure whether I put the review of it yet. It's waiting in the, waiting in the wings to come out. But that was the Fault Lapping Vit beer. Absolutely amazing stuff. The flavors on that, in my opinion, were just head and shoulders above the others. They really did pull out all the stops on there. And yet there are some good Bel Belgian Vit beers and I'll get onto them in a second. But for me, that fault lapping was just, yeah, that was just top of the shop for me. The also rands in the Vit beer steaks were Blanche de Brussels. I've always liked that. It's a cheap Vit beer and I'm combining the price and the quality flavor here now. And yeah, really good. It's one of them ones I'll go to if I, if I don't want to think about what I'm drinking too much, but I really fancy a Vit beer, then Blanche de Brussels is a good one. And the St. Bernardus Vit beer. Again, another good one, very solid, typical Belgian Vit beer. No surprises, got everything you'd expect from a Vit beer. And yeah, that was great. Really enjoyed that. Gers or Husa, depending on, I've been told it's pronounced Husa, by a barman in Bruges who couldn't understand me when I was asking for Gers, but I haven't tried too many and these Lambic beers can be quite expensive. And there's some that I really do want to try, the Cantillon stuff, definitely, but that is so expensive. It's just a little bit out, of, I wouldn't say it's a little bit out of my price range, I could afford it. But when I do reviews of beers, I want to review affordable beers. I don't want to get beers that are just way too expensive and, Who's gonna, who's gonna go out of the way to buy expensive beer? But there you go. Anyway, if we're talking about Gers or Husa, the best one for me last year was the Lindemann stuff. 
Now, to be honest, there wasn't much competition because I think, I could be wrong, but I think that was the only one I tried. And it was quite nice. It was a typical, because it, it always reminds me of a cider. A very nice West Country dry, strong cider. And this one was really nice. And it was reasonably cheap as well. So you're gonna get that, Lindemans. They may be better this year. Who knows? Lambic Creek beer. Well, for me, there really is only one. And that is the Old Creek. I first tried that in Brussels, I think it was. Uh, a mate introduced me to it. I've never tried it before. It's absolutely outstanding stuff. I really did enjoy that. And I don't think it's been bettered. But one beer did come close. But there was some competition. And that came from the Van Honsenbroek Bacchus Creek. Now they do that in Morrison's and I think the price may have gone up, but at the time it was £2.50. And it's absolutely gorgeous. If you cannot get hold of the old boss deals, that stuff is a hell of a lot of a beer for the price. And I love it. My missus also loves it as well. In fact, she'll go out of her way to buy some of it. So that's saying something. So yeah, well done Van Honsenbroek. A very close second. Lambic Frambos or the Raspberry Lambic. Well, there was only one and that again came from Van Honsenbroek and that was available in Sainsbury's and I tried that. It was quite nice, but it's the only Frambos I've tried. I think the only Frambos. I could be wrong on that, but if I did, it didn't stand out. But the, the Van Honsenbroek stuff did and that was quite nice. Flemish Red Ale. Well, for me, there really is only one, and they are the masters at Flemish Red Ale. And that, of course, is the Rodenbeck Grand Cru. I don't think you can get better than that. There are some good ones, don't get me wrong. The Duchess de Bourgogne. But the, the Rodenbeck range of beers are great. But for me, Rodenbeck Grand Cru, as the name would suggest, you know, that's, that means it's a cut above. That was the one for me. I really did enjoy it. And I don't think it's going to be bad. I'm hoping to try some more Flemish Red Ale because I love it. I love the sourness, but I also love the drinkability of it too. But again, as I say, Rodenbeck, I don't think they're going to be beaten. Brown Ale or Old Brewing, as it's known. Well, I'll tell you what wasn't good. The Leffer stuff, I really didn't enjoy that at all. That wasn't good. But what did impress me was the Arkel Trappist Brown Ale. That was really good. And I remember when I tried that, it, it blew me away. I really wasn't expecting much. But again, this comes back to my point about, you know, the Belgian brewers only doing a, a small number of beers, five or six different beers. There's no frills on the label, no frills packaging, no song and dance about the beer. The beer does the talking. And for me, the Arkle stuff was absolutely amazing. That for me was the best brown ale. But there was one that really did impress me. And it came from the Steenbrugger range of beers. I don't think that's the, that brewery exists anymore, but the range of beers does, and I can't remember for the life of me who brews them, but the Steenbrugger Double Brown was really good. In fact, it, it, it bowled me over when I tried it. I couldn't get over how good it was. And considering they're like a budget type of beer, that was really good. So again, you know, I'm going on price and I'm going on flavor there. Fantastic stuff. Christmas beer, well, it's just gone Christmas, so I can remember quite a bit about the good Christmas beers. There are some disappointing ones, I can tell you that now. And the Leffer, again, I have to point the finger at Leffer. It's owned by ABM Bev, so yeah, really didn't recommend that stuff at all. But what I did recommend, and what I do recommend now, is the Fault Lapping. Their Christmas beer, or their Snow Lapping, as they call it, amazing stuff. And I did try quite a few Belgian Christmas beers, but that for me was really good. Really impressive stuff. 
but there was a couple of contenders. One of them was the Saint Furlong, I can't pronounce it, I'm sorry, it's just, I've got a mental block when it comes to that name, but you know the one I mean, their, their Noel beer, brilliant stuff, I really did enjoy that, and I am going to make it my mission next year, or this year, 2021, to get the triple, because the triple is renowned to be the best triple in the world. Now, I'll be the judge of that, but I am going to do it, and I will review it on the channel. Another Christmas beer that impressed me was the Abbey de Rock. Never tried anything about them before. It was cheap on Beers of Europe. I think it was one pound eighty or something like that. I tried it and I was bowled over by the flavour. It was really good. And again, going on the price and the flavour, that for me was an absolute winner. Finally, Saison. Guess what? I didn't try a Saison last year and I tried, I tried some Saison from Craft Brewers and it put me off because to be honest, I, I just, I, I didn't get the point of it, but I really should try some Belgian Saison because that's where it originates from. And I'm, I'm sort of being a bit of a hypocrite here because, you know, in some of my videos I said about lager, you know, Craft Brewers attempting to, to brew, say, German lagers or Belgian Vit beers and you know, why are you going to the imitation? Why not go to the sauce? So I really should be doing that. But unfortunately, I don't have a Saison for this year. So, so there you go. And that concludes my best Belgian beers for 2020. Now, there should have been a hell of a lot more from certain brewers on there because there were certain brewers that were consistently good. And one that springs to mind, and again, it's not one from Belgium, but they brew Belgian beer, and that was La Trap. I do have to mention how good they were. Consistently good. Obviously not the best. I mean, I don't think they compare to Chimay. But their beers, and I did try quite a few of them, they were all very, very good. And they all got high marks. So I have to say, highly recommended. You really should try La Trap beer. It's great. And that's it. If you disagree, if you think I've forgotten something, and if you want to make comments, just put them in the section below. Please like, please subscribe, please hit the bell icon. You'll see when another video goes up. But above all, remember, beer is working class champagne.